Hey, welcome to the podcast. I am super, super excited to share today's episode with you. Welcome, welcome. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Business Beauty Network podcast wherever you're listening. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's free. And share, 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 sharing is caring. So if you know someone who would benefit from this awesome content, please share it. Also, we are now on YouTube at Biz Beauty Network. So check out our YouTube channel. You can actually listen to this episode on YouTube and watch it and watch it live there. So check us out there. We will be dropping some of the episodes on YouTube as well as the Midweek Beauty News episodes will always be on YouTube on every other Wednesday. So make sure you connect with us there. If you have any questions or suggestions for the podcast, you can email us at hello at businessbeautynetwork.com. Also, have you checked out our new website? We have an awesome new website, businessbeautynetwork.com. Check it out and let us know what you're thinking. You can watch the video there. You can listen to the podcast there. You can contact us there as well. So definitely check that out. But now that all of that is out of the way, I have an awesome, awesome episode in store for you. Holly K's Midweek Beauty News is today, and she has dropped some awesome, awesome content for us. It's such a fun episode, and I think it's a great fun spin to um, have to the Business Beauty Network podcast, because I know it could be a bit business, but Holly's episode is fun. So I really hope you guys are enjoying it. Like I said, email me or DM me in, on in Instagram and let me know what you're thinking. My Instagram is I am Brandy Taylor. So at I am Brandy Taylor. Connect with me there. And you can also connect with Holly at underscore Holly K on Instagram. So connect with us both. Let us know how you're enjoying this content and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. But now that all of that is out of the way, here is the midweek beauty news with Holly K, where she shares everything beauty, fashion, and trends. Welcome to Midweek Beauty News with Holly K. On this week's episode, I'm going to switch things up just a tad. I have recently had the opportunity to be an attendee for the School of Retail's Retail Startup Summit 2022. So I'm going to share a bit about that experience, as well as a few things that I have going on within my business for makeup artistry. Now, to start off about the School of Retail, Miss Brandy had the opportunity a few weeks ago on the podcast, podcast to interview the founder of this amazing business. Janelle Alvarado, she has 10 plus years of experience within wholesale, retail, e-commerce, and she has created a site, a platform, where others are able to come and learn from industry experts. So if you are someone who is wanting to break out into the retail space, be that it's for um, clothing, um, anything with fashion, cosmetics, anything of that nature, she has pretty much taken the guesswork out, the search searching that you would have to do for finding pretty much connections or the roadmap to do these things. On her platform, she has industry experts um, and other founders who are sharing their knowledge and their expertise and giving you everything you need so that you can get started and bypass all of the guesswork. The retail summit that they recently held, and they still have available, um, if you enroll into the course, it has 15 classes. So about, you're looking at about 12 hours of the work for attending and like kind of viewing the presentations, but so well worth it. Um, I will say out of the many courses I've taken so far, this was by far one of the best that I've ever attended as far as one main engaging but something that wasn't wasting your time. I know we've all been there. We've taken classes or courses and you think you're getting one thing, you walk out still just as confused or feeling like, you know, what did I really truly receive? So I definitely can say that this exceeds my expectations or probably well, not even my expectations. I didn't have low expectations, but um, it by far exceeds a lot of other classes and courses that I have attended. Um, I am still in the process of completing the rest of the courses, but I'm going to share a bit today from the ones that I have completed so far, so far and the things that did stand out to me. Some of the classes that are included within this course um, are how to create your product patch packaging when you're considering having it go into retail spaces. Um, another one is how to create your old fashioned brand. Um, for next level, or how, excuse me, 
how to create your own fashion brand from scratch. They also have a course on creating your own cosmetic line, as well as creating a beauty brand um, with private labeling. And another one, tips on how to build a successful launch plan. So again, those are just a few of the amazing courses that they cover. Some of the ones that I had the opportunity to kind of dig into already were the product packaging, um, having your product packaging ready for retail. Another was covering the legal aspects of doing online business, which is very important because everybody wants to have an online store, but doesn't think about the other side of it, the legal aspect of it. And then the other was creating a cosmetic line. So some of my takeaways from the product packaging um, lot course, this one was led by a lady of the name, Megan Young Gamble. And she has many years of experience as a project, um, as a project manager and she is the co-owner of a distribution company. She's also a speaker, trainer, as well as a model. And some things that stood out to me when she was sharing about how we um, often think we want our things to go into stores, but we have to be mindful of the different stores. So a product can be carried in multiple retailers. However, the process for each retailer will probably be different. More than likely, it's going to be different. So that's something to really consider as a creator or as a business owner. And also thinking about how you're marketing or what it looks like in those different stores. You have to really consider who your target audience is so that you can make sure it's something that's going to grab their attention. Also making sure that we're mindful of your budget from the very beginning. So oftentimes we have this great idea to create a product. I want it to look this way. I want it to do X, Y, and Z, have these results, and maybe even already knowing who our client is, but we don't factor in the budget for packaging. And that is something that she really stated that we need to do from the beginning. So that is not an afterthought because that really is an important aspect. Also thinking of um, the aesthetic of it. So again, tying into that packaging, is it something that's going to grab a customer's attention? Um, thinking about what information is also on the bottles um, or the packaging itself. You have you want to make sure you have the required information that is needed to be there um, and not withholding too much. You know, we feel like it's our baby. It's something we've created. We don't want to share too much. However, thinking of it from a client's perspective, or looking at it from the perspective of, of your own. If you're going to a store to purchase something and you pick it up, we typically will turn that bottle over or that box over and we're looking for what? The ingredients, um, what it claims that it's going to do because those are the things that are gonna stand out to us and make us really determine, am I going to purchase this? And then once I purchase it, is it living up to what it stated that it will do? And then also considering shipping. So. One, if you're shipping it yourself, but also in retailers, when you think about getting your supplies, your materials, we know we are still in a world where the pandemic does exist and things are affected by that, especially shipping. Um, so even thinking about how there are labor shortages, so that can affect the process. So just being realistic um, and considering all those things from the beginning and not just going into it blindly. From the a course that covered legal aspects with doing online business. This really got me because you try to think of everything, but of course, it's the best when you have a lawyer involved. And one thing, the uh, presenter was Lika Modoshi. Um, one thing that stood out to me was her talking about templates. So oftentimes, nobody wants to put in the work to creating those contracts or creating your privacy policies or terms and conditions. So a lot of platforms will offer templates, which is great, but we have to remember to go back through those templates, do our own homework and customize it to what our need is as a business owner. And then even thinking about if we're using another platform. So if, for example, if we're using different website platforms to host our sites, pay attention to what their terms and conditions are as well as your own terms and conditions. So they all play a very important role. So that's something I thought about. Um, I've thought about like, you know, when I create my own or I have created my own terms and conditions and even like cancellation policies and things of that nature, I've been sure to customize them and tailor them to what I need. But I will be honest and say, I never really thought about going back and paying closer attention to the terms and conditions of 
the sites that I use to host my website. So definitely something to think about and that I'm going to be going back to go through and comb through. Um, as a business owner, another thing to think about is the importance of contracts. We really hear it, but even thinking about that when you are going into business with somebody else. So she even gave the example of if you were working with a photographer and let's say you're getting images from this photographer, be that it's of your product or of yourself, whatever it is, making sure that you truly have the rights to use those images in the way that you would like to in the future once you're done working with them. So it's more than just, I'm signing this contract, I'm paying you this amount to get this work done. But after that, once it's all said and done, what are your rights once you have finished working with that person? So again, food for thought. And then the last one that I'll share about um, came from the course is creating your own cosmetic line. And this one was led by um, Cynthia Johnson, who is a cosmetic chemist. And I'm familiar with cosmetic chemists and I really appreciated her approach to sharing the information about creating your own cosmetic line because she really carved out some time to share what a cosmetic chemist does and what things they should pretty much the qualifications that they should have. And I think this is great. You know, it wasn't just her really sharing about herself, what she did, which is even more, um, which gives her more credibility. But I think from a viewpoint of a business, business owner, if you're wanting to create a cosmetic line and you're in search of a cosmetic chemist, it's good to know what things that they should be coming for, coming with, what qualifications they should have, so you know what to look for in somebody before you engage in business with them. Um, her focus was also on considering the timeline it takes to create a product. So again, going back to being realistic when you're trying to create something, a um, few things to consider. Consider who your client is. I think we'll see that with a lot of things within the industry, especially with the business and fashion. Consider who your client is. That's really going to direct how you create products, how you market products. Um, it's, you need to have the avatar in mind because it will pretty much guide any decisions that you're making. Also, create, thinking about the product formula, um, the ingredients, of course, um, the aesthetics of it. What does it look like? What does it smell like? Um, because these are things that are going to grab the client's attention. But the more you have thought out and you have answers to, it's going to better help you when you go to work with a cosmetic chemist. And even considering the things that you don't want, knowing why you don't want those particular things. So if it's a certain ingredient you're not wanting or it's a way you don't want it marketed, why is that? Because it's great to be able to explain that to a cosmetic chemist or if they ask you certain questions, you want to be able to answer them confidently and kind of know those things. Um, she also shared some resources that cosmetic scientists use. So again, um, I thought that was really great because even though it's not necessarily something that you have to be responsible for, you want to make sure you pretty much have you a checklist so you can make um, you can ensure that the person that you're working with to create your baby is doing things the right way. So. As you can see, a lot of gems that I received just from those few courses, and I'm definitely going to be working through the process of completing the rest. I've been taking notes, and it's, like I said, it's been making me think and go back on some things I kind of need to revisit to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. Now, to share a bit about what I have going on, um, so... This week, I actually am um, looking forward to Premiere Orlando. So Premiere Orlando is a trade show um, for beauty professionals that is hosted here in Orlando, Florida. And they do have, I believe it's Premiere Columbus, as well as Premiere Birmingham. I know they have it in two other places as well. Um, but I'm looking forward to it, one, because it's always really great to get together with other professionals, people you see like on social media that you, pretty much your social media friends, whether you get to connect in person. But this year I'm looking forward to it because I'm actually an educator this year. Um, so this year I decided to take the leap, or earlier this year I decided to take the leap and apply to be an educator. And um, I put in for two different classes and I've been blessed to do both of my classes. I'm teaching all three days, so June 4th through 6th. Um, and again, this is an it's an international beauty, beauty event, so it's pretty big. Um, so I am excited and looking forward to that 
two of my classes will be um, the same, but I have different models for them that will, they're going to be titled Intentional Makeup. So my focus for that class is um, educating other professionals on uh, being mindful of the product selection because that really helps with your final finish as well as paying attention to your client's skin, um, their skin type, their conditions, because that's going to help with your product selection. And then my other course um, is entitled The Sanitation Standard. So this one, um, this was my original kind of like instinct to like what pushed me to be like, okay, I want to apply and do this. And then the other one kind of came to me. And I figured if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for all of it. <laughs> um, but this one is going to cover um, sanitation practices that makeup artists should be implementing into their uh, work and doing. So again, it's the courses are for beauty professionals to attend. Um, but you hear we talk about it on my personal platform as well. I always want people to be aware of what to look for because when you're selecting a beauty professional, um, makeup artist, esthetician or cosmetologist, anybody who works in that industry, I want you to be mindful or knowledgeable what to look for um, or the no-no so you can avoid those things as well. So I again, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be able to share more afterwards. Um, I've attended a few years, um, had the opportunity to assist an educator in the past and so, yeah, it's my time this year taking that leap of faith. And I encourage you to do it too. So instead of us all just kind of sitting on something that we're thinking about, like, oh, I want to do it. What if, what if? Just take the leap. The most that's going to be told to you is no. <laughs> all right. So this is all I have for you on this episode. I am looking forward to seeing you the next time. It's summertime. Well, is it officially? I don't know if it's officially summer, but school is letting out. Everybody's starting to travel um, and looking forward to doing more. Um, now that the, I always say this, the world's open a little bit, but please stay safe. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Until next time.